All right, this morning we're going to learn how to write subqueries, and we're going to do something really basic. Um, so really quickly for people who are just looking for um, the basic answer here, we are going to write a subquery in a WHERE clause, and oh, sorry, I uh, forgot one thing. And I want to show two things. First of all, that's the result. The subquery is found in the WHERE clause. We're looking for everything in delay prices where the name is in, and then we're selecting the name from delay table. So what does delay table look like? We have Apple, Microsoft, Samsung, and Tesla. Uh, let's see what just delay prices looks like. We have Microsoft and Tesla. Okay, and so you will see that we are going to select everything from delay prices where the name is in delay table. Now, this is, like I said, a simple example. So if you're just looking for how to do a subselect in a uh, in a basic just two table format, there you go. Um, but some quick notes about this: Why wouldn't we, or why would we do this, for instance, when we could also write it this way? Um, for those of you who've seen previous videos, you know we could always do it inner join, right? We could just inner join um, a delay table on name, right? Since we know, and this will yield us the same answer because again we're we're doing an inner join on. Um, on the name field, which again, interjoin is looking for matches, basically. Um, well, now, depends on your environment, but let's suppose that there were no indexes at all on these tables. This query right here, the subquery, would be faster. If there are indexes on name, a clustered index on name here and a clustered index, they're equal speed. Um, but with no indexes, this may be faster. Uh, which brings me to the point two. And again, if you're just looking for, like I said, the answer, here it is. The point two would be a lot of people assume, especially a lot of developers, that speed is always the most important thing. Like you want to get things done really quickly. In other words, you want to get not things done, but you want your code to work as fast as possible. And one of my friends recently, she was fired by a client because it took her three weeks to complete a project. And we're talking, this is the type of code that they would teach in Stanford, right? Phenomenal code. The problem is the client expected it in a day. Um, she did not in any way, shape, or form realize that fast code was not something the client valued. The client valued features. They wanted more stuff. If it went slower, they didn't care. It's features. The other thing as well, you run into this problem, is that in some cases, it's actually cheaper to just get another hard drive or more RAM or a better computer. And so, for instance, let's suppose you're paying a consultant $100 an hour. At what point would just buying a better computer save you more money than hiring a developer who's taking, again, in her case, three weeks, if she was just working 40 hours and she was making $100 an hour, that's 4,000 times three, that's $12,000. I mean, you could buy a pretty amazing computer for, you know, couple thousand dollars easily and so that's the other thing as well is like some clients are like I just would upgrade my RAM I remember one time uh, I, w I built this one program that I wanted to keep adding features to and I had about a hundred things I wanted it to do and one of my friends was like oh you know you could make your code 17 percent faster well the program used I'm not kidding one meg well no I'm sorry 1.3 meg of memory and I was 1.3 meg. Okay, let's suppose I can knock off 20 to 7 or 17 to 20 percent. That's just not really saving much. And the other thing too is I wanted more features in my program. I didn't want it to run faster and faster. It, it already ran fast enough for the computer. I mean, in other words, I'm kind of in a problem anyway. If I'm if I'm at one point what two meg and my computer's freezing up and stuff, dear lord, I have bigger problems. I, I need a much better computer. Uh, and so that's just one of those examples where, yeah, you can you can make something run lightning speed. In other words, you can spend all your time trying to figure out which one's faster, but make sure that's on your client or your employer's same page because they may or may not value that. That's why you'll hear in the SQL Server community a lot. A lot of people will say, it depends. 
because really the first it depends is what does your client expect? This is a person who thought, oh, they're going to expect my query and my uh, program to run lightning speed. Well, actually, they didn't value that at all. I mean, if it took a minute to run a query, they wanted to be able to run hundreds and hundreds of different things. So it didn't matter to them. Uh, the other thing as well is if you're not in an OLTP environment, if you're in an OLAP environment, that's, that's another quick concern. Uh, I had a really great boss, Brent, who, who told me something that I'll never forget, which is, um, you multiply your hourly rate times how long you estimate that it will take and then you add another 25% on top of your hourly estimate. And ultimately, depending on how often we did a lot of data imports, how often the data imports are, uh, if it doesn't pay for itself, then it's better to just do it manually, even though a lot of people will, oh, but manually takes a minute and 30 seconds. But his point was, if you can't get it done, in about you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, you're starting to waste more time. And then you get to the point where it would take 100 years for whatever you're doing to pay for itself. And that's something that people don't consider. The other one is RAM. If, it, if we're talking about memory here, well, remember, you can get 8 gig of RAM pretty cheap nowadays. Uh, whereas like back in the day when my, my dad bought a computer back, what was it, 1995, he dropped $1,900 on a computer that had 8 meg of RAM. So what does your client want, or your employer, again, employer slash client, that's the first and foremost thing. And that will determine which of these queries, I mean, again, if it takes you five seconds to write this, then go with that. If your client wants speed, and again, if there's no indexes, this would actually be faster, again, if there's no indexes on either table. And so that's the, the part one, and part two we'll get into a little bit more complexity in our subqueries.